Hey everyone, Shane with Optimal Dwelling Spaces coming to you from this uh, new build construction site that uh, is going to be an amazing new house from my client and wanted to just cover a couple of the things we're doing here and some things to think about when you are trying to create a low EMF or electromagnetic radiation house. So let's go check it out. So this is really where it starts, literally for creating a low EMF space. And this is on the exterior of the house. This is where the utility meter will go. And this is the incoming power feed from the utility into the house. And it's actually required now on all new builds, but if you're doing a remodel, this is definitely something to consider and talk about with your contractors. But we would like to see what's called a meter disconnect combo. And that means exactly what it says right here by the meter. We have this disconnect switch for the entire house electrical. And what that does for us is to create a condition where there are, there is only one point where the neutral and the ground components of the electrical system can touch. And this eliminates the chances for a couple of things. So the first one being what's known as contact current, which is basically below an electrocution level uh, of where your body is touching something that's electrically charged. And most people would never, never ever feel it. Um, it's well below, you know, the level that an electrician might be concerned about. But according to the uh, Electric Power Research Institute, just 18 microamps of contact current can lead to cancer. So we're going to try and knock that out here at the panel and not have crossover points inside the house where the neutrals and grounds are touching. So that's the first thing that this will do for you. The second thing is going to be... Um, keeping circuits balanced in the house. So anytime we have a hot and a neutral conductor that have unequal amounts of current, we have a magnetic field that is produced and it will extend across entire areas and rooms of the house depending on the imbalance. So this is really the starting point for low EMF building or remodeling and it's called a meter disconnect combo. So the next thing on our list is how the house electrical connects to the earth or the ground. And there's a few different ways to do that. The optimal way for a low EMF environment is to have grounding electrodes into the soil. And we have that here in this house. You can see right down here is our first grounding electrode or ground rod. And then just down the way about six feet is the next one. And then these connect with our grounding conductor back to the panel. And I'll show you in a minute the alternative type of connection here, which we're trying to avoid. Okay, welcome to the jungle, literally. You can see here all the, the main conductors for the house going to different areas of the house from our panel. But this is the other type of grounding electrode that I wanted to discuss. It's not optimal. This is a piece of rebar and it goes into we can't see it here because we're covered, but the concrete foundation of the home. And there's a couple problems with this, so that's why we'd like to avoid it. The first being that concrete is wet, it is conductive, that's why it's used sometimes as a grounding point, um, but the electric electricity that's gonna be connecting on this can actually degrade the concrete over time faster than it normally would. Uh, and the second problem here is anywhere in the house that you have the, the slab of concrete exposed, if you touch it, or say if a furnace is touching it, or a washer dryer or some type of appliance uh, is making a connection with that through a metal foot or a metal uh, case, then stray current can get onto that appliance and then onto the wiring um, and onto your body when you touch it. So this is uh, not, the, not the way you want to go if you can avoid it, the oofer connection. Okay, next on the list with the panel, um, one, one thing to note here, depending on where your power feed comes in, which is right here coming up from below like we showed in the previous clip, uh, these are the major conductors coming out of the power feed. And uh, in some houses, 
you're going to want to rotate the panel one way or the other. These main connectors at the top, you can rotate the panel, of course, however you want. We want to keep these as close together as possible. And in some cases, if you don't uh, think about this ahead of time, let's say you put this panel in the other way so that our main lugs here are actually up at the top, then our two, our, our, our three main conductors here would have to travel up and separate here before coming back together at uh, the main lugs. And any kind of separation, conductor separation like that can create an increased magnetic field. So we want to keep these as close together for as long as possible and we've done that here in this house. All right, so the other uh, beauty of the meter disconnect combo is that, like I said, everything after has to be four wire separated. So neutrals and grounds never touch each other besides that one point out there by the meter. And that means we have to use a panel that insulates the neutrals from the ground. And on some panels, those are just intermixed, so it creates a lot of opportunity for current uh, to go where it's not supposed to go creating contact current, creating imbalance on circuits, uh, and magnetic fields. So here, we've got these bus bars, which are for grounding conductors only. And then up here, insulated off of the metal case and insulated from these, are bus bars for all of the neutral wires. So that's uh, one of the beauties of the meter disconnect combo. All right, here's the next area. You can't really tell, but this is the kitchen, and it's an area where people spend a lot of time, and also there's a lot of strong appliances and wiring that are pretty close to you relative to some other areas of the home. So one thing we're doing in the kitchen is using metal wrapped, metal jacketed wiring feeds, and this keeps the electric fields coming off of the Romex down. So normally in a house with just the regular plastic jacketed Romex, these fields can come out into the home three to five feet and carry that electric field and also dirty electricity frequencies that ride on top of it out into the space. So MC is a great way to make certain areas of the home cleaner. It is much more expensive than regular wiring and so you don't want to necessarily use it everywhere but it can be quite useful in key areas of the home. Alright guys, one other thing to consider uh, the use of this metal clad wiring is a little more expensive than standard Romex so if you can incorporate design features in your home like a little bit higher ceilings for the non non metal wrap wiring then you can remove that source of EMF a little further away. Typically electric fields are gonna come out about three to five feet. So if you have a little bit higher ceiling like we do in this house, and you get your wires run up and as far away from living areas as possible, this is a good workaround to uh, using MC. Okay guys, one other simple thing you can do in your home to create a more low EMF environment has to do with the lighting. Actually, there's a lot of things you can do, but one that I want to highlight here is right above me in this shot, and this is up in the ceiling in the hallway, and these are fixtures that will hold light bulbs. These are called can lights, and these are ideal because you can actually choose what type of light bulb goes in them. And there's a number of different light bulbs out there on the market these days, some are better than others. So having the ability <clears throat> to decide what type of bulb you put in is really a big deal for low EMF. And so you want to avoid LEDs that are an all-in-one housing that don't allow you to change a bulb out. And that's pretty common these days with energy efficiency and things like that. But we really want to stick to the old standby, which if I can get it in the frame, is a can light. So here's another key area of the home. This is going to be an office slash therapy room and obviously uh, if you can lower EMF in an area where you're trying to heal and do work you can be more productive and more effective in your healing. So we've also used the metal 
clad wiring here in this office space. Okay, welcome to the master bedroom. And this is an area, of course, where we are sleeping and sleep is the key time to get right for health, recovery, rejuvenation. So we want this area to be as clean as possible. We're doing a couple of things here. Uh, you can probably see some of the metal clad wiring here, which we're using to keep the electric fields and the dirty electricity down. And once the sheetrock is up, we're also going to be covering this entire room in conductive shielding paint to keep out external radio frequency signals from cell towers, neighbors, Wi-Fi, uh, all manner of, of different things, radio stations, radar, and on and on. So this is really gonna be a sleep sanctuary and super clean for EMF. All right, so we're in the hall closet now, and this is going to be actually the hub for the home network. And it's going to use these ethernet cables to s create connection anywhere in the house that doesn't use Wi-Fi, doesn't use wireless signals. And so it's important to have an area in the home where you can have this all controlled and consolidated and then to go out to different areas of the home um, so that you're not dealing with a bunch of uh, Wi-Fi and basically making the home a microwave oven. So the next thing uh, is security for the home. That's an important consideration these days. And unfortunately, most of the options for security involve Wi-Fi, which is objectionable if you're trying to create a low EMF healthy home. So just up above me, you can see a white box on the wall. And that is gonna be actually a hardwired security camera mount. You can see the Ethernet cable coming out to feed that and there are a number of points on the house that have uh, a similar setup so that We can have decent security, but without the wireless downside. Okay guys, let's talk about hot tubs a big consumer of current electricity and also it has motors and pumps and different electronics in it. So it's a big source of EMF overall. And this wall behind me is actually the uh, master bedroom wall. On the other side of it is where the bed is gonna go. So you don't want a big source of EMF close to where you're gonna lay your head down at night. So what we've done here is instead of having the hot tub placed right up on the house, we're actually gonna be moving it just a little bit out here uh, further away from the house so that that field from the hot tub can be removed from the master bedroom. And one other thing we did, instead of um, the, the cheapest, most economical route for the power feed to the hot tub coming right over the master and through this wall down into the dirt here, we've actually moved it down away from the bedroom. A little more expensive, a little more wire, and work on the electrician's part. But now this power feed for the hot tub is much further away from the master bed than it would have otherwise been. So a couple things you can think about with uh, regards to hot tub. Okay guys, thanks for checking this all out. And there are so many great options available if you are doing a new build or remodeling your home with low EMF in mind. and Budgets are different, other considerations affect which of these options you might use. To make sense of it all, to make, make heads or tails of it, it's really recommended to consult with someone like myself, a professional who, who does this all day, every day, so that you can line up your goals with low EMF, with your budget, and other considerations in the home. So I hope this was helpful to you. Please reach out if you have questions, if you'd like to consult, learn what that process looks like. Uh, send me a message, leave a comment, and be sure to click the subscribe and the notification button so that you don't miss the other uh, great tips and tricks around low EMF living that I put out all the time. Thanks.